Most of those who venture into the majestic fjords of Prince William Sound come here briefly to seek respite from that which occupies most of their time and attention, their jobs in the city. This is the story of a couple who've done just the opposite. Susan Ogle and Kelly Weaverling were successful graphic artists working in the Anchorage advertising community who spent all their free time exploring this part of Alaska by kayak. A couple of years ago, they decided to realign their priorities. They moved to the small fishing community of Cordova, population of about 2,500, and bought a small business, which allowed them to concentrate their time on their prime passion for paddling. Now, accompanied by their dog, Ned, exploration of the beaches and seas of the Sound is more than just a weekend adventure. Hey, Susan, this looks like a good place to put in right up here. I'm ready for a break. You, uh, you know, most people uh, work full time and then occasionally trek into the wilderness. You seem to have happily reversed this procedure. <laughs> <laughs> We came here to retire, Jay. This we is did. our retirement. Right. We, we want this to be the last job we ever have. We basically. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Retire when you're young, and then when you no longer can enjoy it, uh, uh, then we can put go your to nose work. In the <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that idea. I wish I'd followed it. What do you find about life in a small town of some 2,000 folk that? is attractive to you by contrast to say life in the big city it's the tranquility it's very peaceful and i love walking down the street and saying hi to everyone sometimes going to the grocery store takes much longer than you'd expect to go in and get a loaf of bread because you have to find out what's happening hey Bill, how you doing how are you? good to see you hi. how's things okay. and Bill's a lodge owner a lodge yeah, it's a little wilderness lodge. We do mostly bird watching and natural history. At one point, we counted 1,500 shorebirds per minute going by. Per I mean, minute. It, I mean, it's a lot. 20 million shorebirds. Kelly and Susan are hardly retired, even though their free lifestyle might suggest that. They earn their bread and butter by running a small, cozy Cordova bookstore. But it's out on the sound where they feed their souls. Thanks. Kelly, what happened? Did you spill the paint, or why the peculiar design? Well, we painted it to look like the uh, underbelly of a killer whale in the hopes that it would keep sea lions a little further away. Did it work? Yeah, I believe it does. How did they act before? Well, they'd kind of come up alongside the kayak, and they're not afraid of anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And they'd come up next to the boat, open up their mouths, and they've got the red on the inside yeah. of their mouths, big canine teeth. <laughs> Used to scare the dickens out of us. And, and they'd even follow you for yeah. miles, oh, yeah. miles mm -hmm. doing this. How about whales themselves? You've encountered them, I'm sure, upon occasion. Well, one time in particular, Susan and I were uh, making a crossing between Night Island and uh, the mainland. We were about half the way across, and we saw a pod of uh, killer whales coming toward us. And it was obvious that they were coming directly toward us, and we were too far to make it to either shore. So uh, one whale in particular we recognized, a fellow with a big, tall dorsal fin that's bent. Probably the largest bull in Prince William Sound. Mm. Well, we saw him coming. <coughs> he came. It was just like right out of uh, a movie, like a submarine Jaws, sail coming huh? up. Yeah. <laughs> and then it went down, 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 down. It, was, oh, it wasn't very far away, just you know, 20 yards or so. <laughs> and uh, I said, Susan, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> K 
Kelly, you're not only uh, obviously entranced with uh, trekking throughout the waters of Prince William Sound, but you're interested in resurrecting the art of constructing the old style Bedarkia. Well, I'm still just learning. Uh, a lot of the knowledge of old construction is lost. But the more I get into it, the more I find that these old boat builders were a lot more sophisticated than we'd previously thought. That I'm convinced now that the design, the material, and the methods of fastening are far superior to uh, these modern fiberglass kayaks. In the old days, original explorers remarked that that was probably the best ocean-going craft ever constructed any place. Is that your view, too? Or? The boat is just as good as uh, the seamen. Mm -hmm. But they are uh, terrifically seaworthy vessels. I mean, gosh, they used to make these trips once a year from Kodiak uh, all the way down to California and back again. Mm -hmm. Susan now uses talents once spent in commercial art while in Anchorage to paint what she really loves here in Prince William Sound. Do you find that life in this area has influenced your art more than perhaps life in other areas? Yes. Influence? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So you've drawn a lot of inspiration from the locale. Very much. I don't paint when I'm out in the sound, but I do sketch. My sketches are usually little scribble plans for paintings, and so you see something on the beach or you see a background that you like, and then come back and spend the winter developing those ideas into paintings. Here in Cordova, it's kind of fun, especially painting fishes. I, I can say to put the word out, I need a halibut head. Well. And by, <laughs> by in, evening, in by <laughs> evening, the phone rings, I've got you one. Susan, I'm, I'm very impressed with the type of artwork you've done, which deals with fisheries. Is that something newly evolved, or have you always done a lot of fish-oriented artwork? No, fish are fairly new. Fish Living fairly in a fishing new. community, fish are fairly new. Mm -hmm. I've done more people in the past, a lot of portraits, just a lot of paintings with people in them. What goes through your mind out there? I'm always listening and watching just to see what you're going to see. And it's all, it, something comes up every minute almost. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. What's for lunch? <laughs> uh, this thing here is pretty good. Uh, sometimes they call this watermelon berry. These little flowers here make these little berries that look kind of like miniature watermelons. Yeah. Or Solomon seal. It's a type of Solomon seal, I think. Yeah. I call it wild cucumber. I'll try this little mm. morsel there. Cucumber it is. Yeah, it tastes just like cucumber. Strangely, I've never seen animals like deers don't seem to eat these. Do they know something we don't? I don't know. Uh, there's a sea otter over there. Oh, right down there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Look like they have a lot of fun. Yeah, well, they roll around and rub their face like that because uh, they have to keep their fur clean. You know, uh, other sea mammals like seals, uh, they've got blubber to keep them warm, but these guys depend on their fur, so they're continually rubbing their faces and scratching and rolling.
What is it about Alaska that it makes it so unique to you folk? There's room for genuine exploration here. Sense of discovery. Huh? That's right, uh, genuine discovery. We've been places in the sound we're absolutely certain that no one's been. Every time we go out and come back with a hundred more questions, it's just seeing hundreds of thousands of birds in one day passing by. It's wet and it's green. Beautiful, beautiful, clear seas. I love the place out there. I just looked at the place and said, well, this is it, you know. I'm through traveling now, this is home. And the people in Alaska are still the best people in the world.